Hello, hello, Marcus here. I want to talk about the worst thing today that a business owner can say. The very worst thing a business owner can say. Um, I saw this morning, and I've seen this post many times before. It was, oh, let's see if I have it handy here. It was on Facebook. Uh, it was on Facebook. Yeah, here we go. So it was a quote by Bruce Lee. It's a quote by Bruce Lee, and it basically says, do not correct a fool. Do not correct a fool he or he will hate you. Correct a wise man and he will appreciate you. Bruce Lee. Love that quote. Saw it again today. Um, really profound quote. So again, um, don't correct a fool because he'll hate you. Correct a wise man and he'll appreciate you. So this kind of goes with the theme today of the worst thing a business owner can possibly say. So um Recently here in my hometown, the cleaners, the dry cleaners across the street, she was there for 40 years. Uh, she decided to retire and move south and um, somebody else came in, literally within the last two months, somebody else came in and um, was uh, giving it a shot at, at dry cleaning. Now, all the equipment was gone, so he had to outsource it to somebody else. So he would drive a half an hour every day and drop off clothes to a cleaners uh, about a half an hour away and then, you know, subcontract it out and bring it back. And substations and dry cleaners do work. A lot of a lot of cleaners are substations. They don't clean in-house themselves. They send it out to their, to their main one or they send it out to another company altogether and, um, and just, you know, their drop-off point, uh, basically. So he was basically a drop-off point. He was a substation and he had weird hours. Weird hours. And I noticed I'd walk, I'd watch people all the time walk up with clothes and then turn away and walk away. Now he was in the location of a place that had been in business for literally 40 years. So it was a known dry cleaners. And I got, I got friendly with him. I tried to help him out and I told him I'd do this for him and that for him. And, and I went in yesterday and he goes, um, I'm not taking any more clothes. And I said, oh, you're not. He goes, no, I'm closing. And I said, you're closing. He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm closing. He goes, I can't make it here. And I said, you've only been here two months. And his response to me was, I've tried everything and it's not working. I've tried everything. I've tried it all. I've tried everything. Working with a lot of other restaurant owners and talk, talking to restaurant owners that, that, that are failing, especially that are failing, business owners that are failing, a common denominator with them is they always say, I've tried everything. So my response to people are, if you tried everything, you could write a book. If you've tried everything in marketing, you could write a marketing book. If you've tried everything for, this is, you could write books then. If you've tried everything because you have experience with everything. And when I get a hold of these people, I say, okay, have you tried this kind of marketing? What does your database look like? Um, are you, did you link your Facebook pixel on your website? Let me see your custom audiences. Let's, um, let's talk about your open rates on emails. Let's talk, I list off a bunch of things like, well, we don't do that, we don't do that, we don't do that. That's a common theme across the board as well. No, we don't do that, we don't do that. So I wanna plug my computer in. Um, and they go, well, we don't do that. I'm like, but you just told you just told me you've tried everything possible, and this is why you're closing your business. Well, they're like, well, you know, I, I didn't kind of try that, but I, I I tried I tried everything else. Same thing in health. People will get cancer. People will get a degenerative disease. People will get some. I've tried everything, or they'll be sick. I've tried everything. I took some vitamin C. I tried everything. There are so many alternative ways to heal the body. There are so many methods to market. There are so many methods to run a profitable business. There are so many methods to manage staff that when you say, well, I don't have a good staff and I give up, I've tried everything. No, you haven't tried everything. You have not. Because if you, there's something along the way that works for other people. And part of this is happening on opening mind. And once, once a business owner goes, I've tried everything, it means that they're not interested in learning. All right? And again, Bruce Lee says it the best here. Bruce Lee says the best in this quote. So, do not correct a fool or he will hate you. Correct a wise man and he will appreciate you. Only the wise men, only the wise men and women, wise business owners, are open to new suggestions, are open to, 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 to learning more, grasping more. Some of the restaurant restaurateurs, the owners, some of these owners, some of these companies that I work for, own multiple restaurants are doing they're doing millions and millions and millions of dollars and they're looking for one or two things to get them to the next level and these are the people that are the wise people these are the wise business owners um i spoke to somebody the other day who is working for a chain restaurant a nice chain restaurant by the way nice 
and um, they have 30 locations there. They've been in business six years, and they're growing and growing and growing. They're pumping a ton of money in. This is one of my recent videos was restaurants run out of money before, uh, they, they don't run out of money, they run out of strategy, right? Because they throw in all this money in the beginning. A lot of restaurateurs dump a lot of money in. And this is what this restaurant's doing. There's 30 locations and they just keep raising money and dumping money in and dumping money. And as I'm talking to them about food costs and labor costs and management style, this that, come to find out the place is a disaster, total disaster. They got a great location and they're bringing in revenue, right? So any profitable business will hide flaws. They'll hide imperfections. They'll hide the evil. It's easy to hide the evil when you have enough money to pay the bills. But when you don't have enough money to pay the bills, the evil doesn't hide. And I learned this a long time ago. The very first restaurant that I was country club, the very first country club that I was a chef at, the executive chef at in Colorado, 1998, 97, 98, he taught me, the general manager taught me, Marcus, revenue cures all evil. And I was like, yeah, revenue cures all evil. And I thought that for the longest time. Revenue hides a lot of evil, was what that statement should say. Revenue can hide the evil, all right? Sure, you can make money, but getting to the next level is the next step, and you have to have an open mind. So a friend of mine who owns literally 30 restaurants, um, I gave him a copy of my book after I wrote it. I said, uh, here you go, here's my, my book, you know, 50 Mistakes That Business Owners, that restaurant, restaurant Owners Make. And he looked at me and he goes, man, if I wrote that book, it would have been 250 mistakes. And I'm still learning, was exactly what he told me. One of the most successful restaurateurs out there. And he goes, Marcus, I could have wrote it on 250 mistakes and I'm still learning. That is the open mind that business owners need. They need to say, hey, I'm not doing everything. Other restaurants, other business owners, other entrepreneurs are doing something that I'm not doing and I can learn. This is why mastermind groups are so powerful because you lock yourself into a room and you learn and share techniques and things that you're not doing. When I first opened my business, my restaurant in 2003, the first four or five years I struggled. From 2004 to 2008, we struggled. The restaurant kept growing in, in sales because we were providing good product and we were providing good service. So overall, it was good food and good service. So of course, the only direction we could go was up. But then after being in business for four years, going to my fifth year, I joined this mastermind group. And we were growing, 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 steady, steady, not, nothing, nothing groundbreaking. As soon as I locked myself in a, in a room with 50, 75 other experienced, highly motivated, highly successful restaurateurs from across the country and in the Canada and into Mexico, that next quarter of my business, 44% increase over the year before. And I, was already, I was already in business for four years, but I had an open mind and now people started, and I thought, I thought, wow, man, I've been in business four years. Like I've, I've tried a lot of stuff here, but I was willing and I knew that there was more things to be tried. So after joining that group and paying money to join that group, good money, I made my money back very easily and 44% increase from 2000, I think it was 2008, the first three or four months of the year to 2009, the first three or four months of the year, by just simply going to one meeting, one meeting in Atlanta, Georgia, locking myself in this room, and then going back three months later, applying those techniques, and going back four months later, applying those techniques, going back four months later to a meeting in Austin, Texas, or no, um, what's the river, what's the river, San Antonio. I went to a meeting in San Antonio with the mastermind follow-up, and I said, here are my results. That I, that I implemented, here were the results, here was what I did the year before without knowing these techniques, 44% increase. I actually won an award um, for, for I forgot what it was, it's one of these trophies back here on one of the wall, or I think right up there, that trophy, if you're watching or listening, if you're watching this video, as opposed to listening. So, the most detrimental thing that any business owner can say is I've tried everything. Because trust me, folks, you have not tried everything. That's the bottom line. By the way, speaking about trying new techniques, 50 mistakes that business owners make. This book is free, by the way. If you go to marcusgiuliano.com or 50mistakes.com, hit the link that says free book, get my book for free. You'll pay a few dollars for shipping and handling. We'll give you a digital download and we'll also... Um, send you a hard copy of the book. I have another book that, and some really awesome videos and courses on psychology, marketing, how to trick the brain. If you do the little upsell on there, I, I think it's like 40 bucks or something, 50 bucks, you'll get another book. We'll ship those for free. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll ship it. Um, all that's included in there in the price. And uh, you'll get some amazing videos of stuff that you have not tried before. 
I can get, I can, if you've tried this stuff before, I'll give you your money back. If you've tried the stuff, if you tried all 50 things in this book, I will give you your money back. I will pay, it's a free book anyway, but it's shipping. You gotta pay a few bucks for shipping. I'll give you that back. I'll even let you keep the book. If you call me and say, Marcus, I've tried everything in your book. I've already done this prior to getting the book. I've already done this because I've tried everything and yeah, I tried it all. Then I'll give it, I'll, I'll, I'll refund, I'll refund your shipping and you can still keep the book. Same thing with the courses. I teach psychology marketing. Psychology marketing is a big thing right now, and that's what I teach, how to trick the brain into buying, okay? You trick the brain into buying where the brain doesn't know that they're buying, and you impl impl uh, implement this on your website. I, I, can go, I can go to the most successful restaurateurs out there. Uh, Heilman, who owns all those restaurants, 600 restaurants, his one, he's the, he's the big boy in the country, folks. He's the guy who owns Landry's, he's the guy who owns all these big concepts, 600 restaurants across the country. And one of his restaurants, is one restaurant, Catch, New York City and L.A. Um, Ty Lopez, I got this idea from Ty Lopez, the psychology marketing, how to apply, apply it to restaurants. Ty Lopez pulled up his website. It's the most successful restaurant. He's a billionaire, a billionaire restaurant restaurateur. We pulled up his website. Ty Lopez pulled up his website to Catch. And the website had zero of these psychology things on the website. Zero. The most successful restaurateur in the country not trying to simple things like this. So even Heilman has not tried everything, okay? So the most successful restaurant tourists out there have not tried everything, folks. So the idea, the name of this game is to keep learning, keep going, keep moving forward. And the second you say I've tried everything, you shut your mind off to learning and you shut down. This cleaners, the guy who was in the cleaner, I, I, I tried to give him a little bit of advice. I tried to, 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 to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And all I ever heard was but, 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 but. Don't be a butt man. Don't be a butt person. Don't say but. Tell me what you can do. And I, 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 I tell this to my staff. I usually tell this to my wife. Tell me what we can do. I don't want to hear what we can't do. Tell me the cans. Can't do this. Can't do that. Can't do that. I don't want to hear the buts. Tell me what you can do. And when you open your mind and you start saying things like that, things start happening as opposed to I've tried everything. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in.